hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. If you are thinking about a career in clinical psychology and you're trying to decide you know if this is the field for you you might be wondering how you can figure that out before you go to school and spend and possibly waste a lot of time and money before realizing that this is just absolutely not what you want to be doing with your life or you could be on the complete opposite side of that spectrum and be someone who is absolutely planning on applying to clinical psych programs and are trying to get some more experience under your belt, you know, maybe to beef up your CV for applications. And maybe you're looking particularly for clinical experience. So today I'm going to be going over just a few ways that you can get some more clinical experience before entering grad school rather than waiting until you get to grad school to start dipping your toes in. Before I get into all of that, um, if you are more interested in research or you know that you're applying to programs that value research experience over clinical experience and are more interested in getting information on how you can get research experience prior to grad school, in a video that I posted back in August or September, um, I went over a few alternatives of ways you can get research experience prior to grad school. I didn't go too much in depth in that video, so if you're looking for more in depth information, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely like make a video on it. Um, but I think that that video is a pretty good starting point in terms of kind of deciding other ways to get research experience um, and kind of starting your own research there. So I will have that video linked down in the description below as well as up in one of these corners. Um, so definitely check that out if that's what you're looking for. So back to clinical experience. Um, <laughs> I like talking about clinical stuff much more. Um, Getting some clinical experience in prior to grad school, whether that's a master's program or a PhD program, is not absolutely necessary, um, but it can be helpful for a number of reasons. One, as I mentioned, is that it can be helpful if you're not really 100% certain that clinical psych is what you wanna do, and so you're kind of just trying to figure things out before you go all in and commit to this. But it's also useful in helping you kind of uncover or discover what it is about clinical work that you love and that you're passionate about. Um, and it could also help you start to figure out what populations of individuals or what communities you are more interested in working with later on down the line. So let's just get into it. So the first thing to remember, especially if you are looking for clinical experience specifically for grad school applications, is that there are so many things that could count as clinical experience. Pretty much as long as you are working directly with individuals who are receiving some form of mental health service, it can count as clinical experience. So you may already have some experience under your belt that you may have thought, eh, that doesn't really count, but in actuality it does. Um, so just keep that in mind. So onto the list. Um, so the first way you can get some clinical experience in before grad school is through volunteer counseling work. Um, that is a very broad umbrella term um, and that just kind of reiterates my previous point that so many different kinds of volunteer counseling work can also provide you with some really valuable clinical experience that is relevant to what you want to do later on. This could range from being a camp counselor for children with disabilities, uh, being a substance abuse counselor, volunteering in a hospital, any, you know, hands-on counseling work like that. And what's really beneficial about hands-on work is that it can be really fulfilling and really rewarding if you are working with a community or a population that you truly like enjoy working with and that you truly connect to. A second way that you can get clinical experience is by volunteering for a crisis line or a hotline. This is kind of a subcategory to volunteer counseling work. 
um, but it's like a large enough category that you can kind of talk about it on its own. Places like the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and Crisis Text Line and the National Sexual Assault Hotline are great ways to get clinical experience if you are particularly interested in working with individuals who experience more difficult situations, more difficult crises, uh, and things like that. Now, no, no, I know you might be thinking, oh my God, like I would not even know where to begin in terms of helping, you know, these individuals. Each of these organizations have training programs that their volunteers are required to go through and pass prior to having direct contact with those who are reaching out to the hotlines. Through these trainings, you are guaranteed to receive the necessary skills you need to make sure that you can help these individuals and not cause them more harm. On top of that, all of these organizations have very strict guidelines that need to be followed, very strict protocols that are followed in case an emergency comes up. And there are also usually more experienced supervisors who are there on call, ready and waiting in case you need them. So no worries, you will be prepared if this is the route you choose to take. A third way that you can get clinical experience, um, if you are an undergraduate student, you may be able to work with your advisor and find an internship of some sort. You could even possibly work with your advisor to create an individualized practicum experience by working with you know, community organizations or local agencies who might be willing to supervise you. Of course, a lot of this will depend significantly on you and your school and your program and what is and isn't allowed. Um, but I think it's always worth asking and advocating for yourself if this is something that you really want to do. And lastly, a way that you can get clinical experience is part-time work. Part-time work is always a win-win in my eyes. <laughs> if this field is something that you're passionate about, then you could be doing something that you love and also be getting paid for it at the same time. And who doesn't want that? So there are also different types of part-time work that could count as clinical experience. Um, this includes working as an assistant to a licensed psychologist, uh, working as an intake coordinator in a community mental health center, being a discharge planner for a crisis unit. The list goes on and on and on. And you can often find these jobs through like just common job listing sites. Keep in mind though that some of these jobs might have requirements for prior experience in order to apply um, that you may or may not already have. So just be on the lookout for that when you're searching. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this was a really quick video. <laughs> I wanted to keep this one short because my past few videos have been quite long. Um, I think my last one was almost 20 minutes long. So <laughs> Didn't want to do that to y'all this week. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Um, again, if you want a video that's more dedicated to getting research experience, let me know and I'll certainly make that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and click that little notification button so you don't miss my next upload. And I will see you in my next one.